And welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your weekly MEM Edge show brought to you each and every Friday afternoon. This is the show where we put you in front of where the action is in the broader market. So let's go ahead and take a look at our agenda for today. We are going to go ahead and drill down, take a good look at the markets. It's been a rather interesting week to say the least. We did see a broad-based rally essentially fizzle out, for lack of a better word. We'll get into that, as well as take a look at where the markets are at this point with an eye toward preparing yourself for next week and beyond. Uh, earnings season had a very big week this week. A lot of bellwether stocks did come out with their numbers and it was not all that. So we are going to take a look at some of these bigger names and see where they stand relative to the broader markets. And also the market rally is under a bit of pressure, but we're going to take a look again at the underlying sub industry groupings to get a sense of really where we are as far as the markets and what we can anticipate given the information that we have for this week. And then longer term look, we're going to take a look at gold stocks. And we have seen a nice flight back into gold stocks. So in addition to taking a look at a group graph, we're also going to drill down, share with you how you can uncover potential candidates within gold, because again, they are uh, setting up quite nicely at this juncture, certainly given the overall dynamics in the broader markets. So let's go ahead. As usual, we're going to go ahead and start by taking a good, nice look at the S&P 500. This is a daily price chart. I'm going to blow it up a little bit larger here. And really what we want to focus on right now is the action uh, as far as what the broader markets brought us this week. And we can see quite simply over the past five days, quite a bumpy ride. We did end the week just in net positive territory, so we will take it. Uh, what we can see as it relates to these simple moving averages that are critical to my work is that the S&P 500 closed the week above this upward trending 10-day simple moving average, and I like to go back to uh, historically bullish phases and show that normalized markets, we want to see the broader markets above this shorter term uh, simple moving average. But of course, this uh, period here, as we can see, it is not, it is hardly a normal market, but we can still use these road signs. And so a close above is bullish. We're also above this 50 day simple moving average. And this uh, 50 day simple moving average is generally by and large a line in the sand. It's an, a moving average that institutions are going to pay close attention to. So we are very nicely well above that simple moving average as well. So for all intents and purposes, the near term uptrend in the markets is in place. We can see that the RSI is still up above this net neutral 50 in good standing. And then I'm going to go ahead and shift down below to the stochastics. And I get questions a lot as far as why I would use the uh, stochastics relative to using the MACD moving average convergence divergence. Both are momentum indicators. But I do find that particularly as it relates to broader market indices, the stochastics are going to provide what I would call a faster or certainly earlier signal. So let's take a look at these stochastics. We want them to be trading above this net neutral 50 on the daily. They are doing just that. And we can see when I talk about that early signal, going back to that March 23rd low, the stochastics did turn positive, certainly well before uh, the RSI. And we did get other bullish indicators as well, but just pointing out the that this particular signal can be and is historically earlier in its telling as far as the prospects for the broader markets. So I'm going to go ahead and take a minute here and take a look at a weekly view of the broader markets and sharing also with the stochastics. And what we're looking for here is a 
view or an outlook going a bit longer term as far as the prognosis for the broader markets. They did, uh, as stated, were able to remain above this 10-week or 50-day simple moving average. I'm sharing the weekly with you because we did get that nice early stochastic bullish signal last week. It is still staying above that 50, so we do have that. However, the RSI, I would say it's being denied as far as potentially giving an additional possible bullish signal. But of course, hands down, we do still have a big roadblock here in the way of a 40 week or 200 day simple moving average. That's gonna be your next area of possible upside resistance. Before we leave the broader markets, I want to take a minute here and take a look as the NASDAQ composite. The NASDAQ has been a clear cut out performer, taking us out of, uh, potentially out of this bear market period. And we can see that it is bullishly also in good standing as it is above not only that 10 and 50 day simple moving average, the NASDAQ is also above the 200 day simple moving average, the RSI and the stochastics are also in positive standing. So by and large, despite the uh, fizzling of an early week rally that occurred, the broader markets do currently appear to be in good standing. Now, of course, as we drill down, look into some of these individual sectors, uh, I can share with you sentiment, what else we are seeing, but we always like to start with a bigger picture view and then zoom in and drill down from there. So let's go ahead and do just that with a, a view of the S&P 500 sectors. And here we are using those 11 S&P ETFs as well as a look at the S&P 500. This is a two month, it's called a candle glance view and it can be really quite constructive and helpful. I gone ahead and overlaid that RSI. We want to see where the relative strength is and it is in descending order. So let's go ahead, drill down further beyond those broader markets. And we can see that in the forefront is XLC. This is the communication services sector. And I will tell you this particular, uh, it was up for the week, 1.8%. Let's go ahead and blow that up. And you'll find as you look beyond just the chart or uh, a view of the overall sector, having the insight as far as the underlying stocks within or among those sectors is really gonna be quite helpful. But looking at the chart, we can see it is still finding resistance here at this 200 day simple moving average. One of the heavier weights within or among uh, the XLC is Google. And we are gonna take a look at that later. Uh, the stock is holding up remarkably well, came out with very good ad revenue sales for their most recently reported quarter. So let's take a look here, XLY up here in the forefront. And this is actually rather astonishing given the fact that uh, Amazon is and did get hit today. And that's the drop that you're seeing here, uh, almost 4% on the day for XLY. But we will take a look at some real vibrancy within uh, consumer discretionary as optimism earlier in the week due to various states beginning to open their economy has a number of areas within discretionary that is uh, that are picking up and showing uh, signs of bullishness. Energy, we're seeing a bit of stabilization here in the energy sector. And so that is up here in the forefront. We also can see technology is continuing to hold in well. And again, we did see a lot of reporting relative to the technology sector this week. Uh, healthcare did languish. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the group uh, ETF for the healthcare area. And this particular sector was down two and a half percent for the week. This XLV and this healthcare sector have really been just outstanding outperformers. Everything to do with coronavirus, potential treatments, vaccines, and so forth that are being uh, formulated. But also we are seeing uh, 
research strength outside of coronavirus with other drugs being uh, certainly cancer and otherwise related that are being passed. But let's take a look at the chart here on XLV. Broke below this 10-day simple moving average, but again, RSI up here in good standing. We can see we are potentially getting this black line through the red, and that can in some cases signal an uptrend reversal, but we're still up above this net neutral, so in good standing still. Let's go ahead and carry on as far as looking at these various sectors. Uh, material stocks, I will tell you at one point this week, the uh, XLB was up 7.2 two percent huge advance again a lot of it about optimism a lot of those beaten down steel and other types of infrastructure stocks did see a nice bounce pull back but we are still above this 10 day simple moving average we're going to get into of course gold stocks among the basic materials because they are one of the continued outperformers throughout into the end of the week. Uh, XLI, let's take a look at the broader chart here because this was really very encouraging. I was actually excited about it earlier in the week. We did get a bullish break of the industrial sector up above that 50-day simple moving average. Quite frankly, I want and we all would love to see a broadening out of participation in this current market rally. It's been all about tech, healthcare, and other very select areas. So a move into industrials really uh, caught my attention. A lot of it was transportation related stocks as well as select, um, oh my goodness, I want to say, uh, for instance, Boeing and defense related stocks, uh, Lockheed Martin and so forth. Some of those did have nice moves. Unfortunately, more recently, latter into the week, we did see a pullback but we are still in good standing with XLI. That was another group at one point that was up over 6%, but uh, ended the week up only a little bit more than one. And so as we drill down, we can see utility and real estate stocks continuing to dominate the weakened area of the broader markets. Interestingly, Staples also had uh, not such a good week. This was a very weak area, Staples down 1.8%, for the week, utility stocks down 4%. And it's not just because they are defensive. There are sound reasons these areas are languishing. Uh, utilities, corporate utility use is down with the lockdown. Also within Staples, not every area is uh, participating. So we are seeing diminished returns there more currently and recently. And then real estate, all about the uh, potential with unemployment being so high and also commercial leases no longer uh, being utilized. There is a bit of fear in the REIT area as far as the outlook for those stocks. Let's go ahead and move on beyond the sectors because we do want to take a look at some of the other usually growthier areas. This is where I populate the candle glance view with the broader market indices, small cap index, NASDAQ, S&P, the Dow, as well as I want to see where software stocks are. That is IGV is uh, certainly one that I tend to favor as it relates to software, as well as semiconductor. You looking at the semiconductor index. These are two of the top growth areas among technology. So I want to keep an eye on that. We also have oil, gold, VIX, and biotech. That was a, is a super strong area among healthcare. So again, RSI in descending order. Let's go ahead and drill down, take a look. We can see that IGV is up here in the forefront. This again is the software space. And the software really had been leading. Take a look as far as the break above all of these simple moving averages. One of the front runners on that bear market recovery rally. And a lot of it has to do with the ability with cloud computing to keep uh, employees, workers, as well as individuals connected. So we can see that it is still in good standing despite a significant drop. Uh, we'll take a look at Microsoft, one of the bellwether names within software, and there certainly are others as well. We can see it's right up here continuing uh, currently in the forefront and followed by the NASDAQ. We talked about the NASDAQ earlier being a leadership group. Uh, let's take a look at gold. 
and uh, we can see it's up here in the forefront this week. So very encouraging. I'm going to share a longer term chart with that uh, to you momentarily. IBB was down 4% this week. So we can see this significant drop here. For those of you that follow the markets closely, you'll be very familiar with Gilead. That's one of the heavyweight names that is really dominating uh, the broader markets because in fact, they were late today provided with the emergency uh, FDA approval for their treatment. Although the stock really, uh, we can take a look at that as well, did not really respond. But overall, we are seeing a little bit of downtrending in the biotech stocks. It has everything to do with some of the larger stocks that are comprised within that. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look. It's gonna be Amgen, Biogen, Gilead, Illuminid, and Vertex, and that accounts for 35% of this particular index. So not every stock within biotech is vibrant or showing strength. Uh, moving right along, we can see I do have to share the Russell 2000 index because super, this is another area got me very excited when we had this nice bullish break back above the 50 day. Small caps were up over 10% going into the close on Wednesday. So another bullish sign that at the broader markets were uh, actually broadening out beyond the NASDAQ and technology. And unfortunately, small caps did give up most of their gains for the week so that they ended the week up just only a little bit more than 2%, 2.3% on that, but still quite nice. We'll take it. It is upward. The only thing I would argue is intense volatility. When you see a broader market index going up 10% and closing the week up 2%, I can only imagine the volatility among the individual stocks. So you would need to be prepared for that should you want to play the potential move into small cap stocks. And let's see if we had um, oil prices here down languishing at the bottom. I did also did not want to miss taking a look at semiconductors and we can see down 5% today. And this is all about Trump's retaliatory efforts potentially against China. 99% of semiconductor stocks derive a good portion of their revenues from the Chinese marketplace. So that really is going to impact these semiconductor stocks that had been exhibiting superior strength. It's gonna be on a stock by stock basis, but I will say another area to be aware of the excessive volatility that is inherent. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a weekly chart of semiconductors to give you a broader, better sense back into this 2019 period. This uh, May pullback here, 2019, all about China tariffs potentially, and we did get a, a correction in semiconductors. So you'll get these dips so uh, we are down 3% on the week. It'll be interesting to see how these semiconductors, can they withstand the pressure potentially against China and uh, retaliatory efforts. So I am gonna take a brief break. When we get back, we are gonna drill down further, take a look at some other individual sectors and how you can capitalize on the potential move into those areas. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Mary Ellen McGonigal, author of the MEM Edge Report. In my bi-weekly report, I highlight top growth stocks as they enter buy zones, and I educate subscribers on why that stock is attractive both technically and fundamentally. In addition, you'll be alerted to when it's time to exit that stock based on negative technical action. And this bi-weekly report gives you confidence by providing fundamental insights into why an area of the market is strong and which companies within that strong area have the best growth profiles that'll help propel that stock higher. Subscribers to the MEM Edge report are benefiting from my expertise in uncovering top performing growth stocks. Subscribe now to take advantage of my special trial offer. 
and we are back. I did want to share with you, we talked about that move into gold stocks. What we're looking at here is a monthly price chart of gold. And by looking at these longer term charts, you're able to smooth out a lot of the volatility, bounciness, and also you can get a better outlook or prognosis for a longer term potential move. So let's take a look for uh, actually the month. This is um, only going to take into account today, but the gold was up 6%. But what I did want to point out to you is how this particular, uh, this is the and it is approaching these 2011 highs back here up in that 1800 level. We are currently close to 1700 and we could potentially break out of a multi-year base. The relevance here is at relative to a stock and an index as well as a commodity. The longer term your base breakout, the longer the potential advance out of that base. And we can go back historically to other levels. We can take into account the 0809 bear market and take a look at the move out of that recovery. And it did last several years. So very, very bullish, longer term, bigger picture view for gold. Let's go drill down into some of the individual stocks among gold. Where we are now, I'll just take us back so I can share with you how you can get to this view that I have here for among gold stocks. Quite simply, you can go to the sector summary, S&P, those 11 sectors. Go ahead and pull up material sectors fund. What it will do is provide you with these underlying sub-industry groupings and gold miners up here in the forefront. I'm going to go ahead and click on to that. Here are the subsequent underlying stocks. I like to rate it by this stock charts technical rating. This is going to provide me with those stocks that have the highest rated technically uh, chart patterns. And oftentimes there are very sound reasons for that. The underlying fundamentals and dynamics are also going to be very bullish. And then from here, you can take a look. I tend to prefer larger cap, but these gold miners are going to be dominated by smaller cap names. So we can take a look. Uh, let's go ahead and look at GLD. That's Barrick gold, uh, rather bellwether name. And we can see that on this daily price chart, uh, GOLD did undercut this 10-day simple moving average, but closed the day back above it very bullishly on very good volume. So that would be certainly a compelling looking chart. Let's go ahead and resort this by this scooter rating. Take a look at another well-known name. This is a smaller price. It is below $5, but we can see that it has had this back and fill. This is a daily price chart. So really a period of consolidation, a break back above that $5 would be very bullish for AUY. And AEM is another well-known name that all, a lot of these are having about a one to two week consolidation period, which is very standard given the large advances that they've had. So we are on the prowl for another potential leg up. And you can always pull up a longer term chart and you'll see that this area has had a significant advance. But despite that, the RSI is not in an overbought position and the MACD is still not yet above zero for this particular stock. So more potential upside certainly ahead. Uh, let's take a look at some other stocks. I did want to review some of these bellwether names that reported earnings this week because we did have a big week and then also I will share with you several names also of import as far as not only to their stock but to the broader markets uh, that are due to report next week. This first name is Apple, of course, very well known. Uh, the company did come in ahead of estimates and we can see with that the stock broke out of a nice two-week base and what we are looking at beyond that is the stock did advance beyond that nice base breakout. This is where we are, uh, big volume. But today, of course, as did the broader markets, 
Apple did pull back, but it is still in good standing, well above these simple moving averages. And what they did as well as coming in ahead of estimates, they did pull guidance for Q2. And we're seeing quite a bit of that as these companies uh, naturally just so much uncertainty regarding the economy. So we're seeing a lot of pullback as far as reporting uh, estimates going forward. Amazon had a big gap up going into the close yesterday, big anticipation regarding their earnings. The stock is down 7.6%. They not only came in below estimates for earnings, they are also pointed out a heavy spend in Q2 so that they can keep workers safe during this coronavirus to uh, provide home delivery service, food, and other needed items. So on this daily chart, we can see that it has broken below this 10-day simple moving average. However, your other various indices are still in good standing. We always like to use history as a guide. And I am going to go ahead and add an additional simple moving average in here as an added layer so that you can know what to be on the lookout for possible continued deterioration. A break below this 21-day simple moving average would also bode poorly for the stock. And then at some point in time, you get that negative death cross, that 10-day down through the 21-day simple moving average in line with, on the daily chart, the RSI did turn negative. Uh, and also we did prior have that negative crossover. So we're still in the early stages, keeping an eye on Amazon. We can take a look at other companies that did actually come out with earnings this week and are holding in remarkably well. This is TEAM team, uh, one of the primary software cloud computing companies, and the stock did come in ahead of estimates. They also guide it lower but the stock is retaining its bullish stance. Another one that came in, uh, this is another software stock that came in ahead of estimates this week. They did guide lower and the markets did not receive that as well. So it does seem to be on a stock by stock basis as far as whether the management's uh, guiding lower is being uh, challenged or is it still being kept in view. Uh, one last name we can look at here is Visa. The company did come out with numbers, but they guide it lower going forward because they are seeing a remarkable drop in spending. Uh, the stock is still in bullish uptrend near term. I do want to just take a minute here and look at two stocks that are due to report next week that could very well have an impact. One is Shopify, big winner here. Uh, management came out and said that uh, each and every day in the April month was similar to Black Friday as far as huge volume, a lot of brick and mortars going online using the service. So this will be a closely watched report on Wednesday. RNG is another bellwether name of late because of it had been performing here uh, because it is helping keep people connected during this lockdown period. But it is showing definite signs of deterioration and weakness as we can see it's breaking down on that RSI negatively. So this will be closely watched. The company has a history of reporting ahead of estimates. Of course, this is their last quarter prior to the bear market. So this will be another closely watched stock. And then RGLD, I'll leave it at that because this is a stock that is due to report one of the very few going into earnings where analysts are revising estimates higher. 83% this year, 20% growth next year, really finding support at this upward trending 10-day simple moving average. So keep your eye on that one. I will leave it at that. For those of you that would like insights into additional stocks that are showing superior outperformance and have a good prognosis, go ahead and use the link below to trial my MEM Edge bi-weekly report. I will leave it at that. Everyone, have a great weekend. 
Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.